I have some bad news for you. We live on a planet where war is a daily occurrence. Right now, there are 32 countries in the world where armed conflicts keep on being fought. The dark side of wars is always the annihilation of lives. Thousands of people die during military confrontations, but there are also those who manage to survive, traumatized to life, having lost loved ones, often unable to find a way through life. My name is Gregor Razumovsky, and today I will tell you a little more about some of the incredible coincidences that help people save their lives during horrifying events. In the spring of 1944, two Jewish prisoners achieved the impossible. They escaped from the Nazi death camp of Auschwitz. Walter Rosenberg, 19 years old, and Fred Wetzler, 25 years old. The majority of the Jews brought to Auschwitz were immediately sent to the gas chambers. However, Walter Rosenberg avoided this fate. The guards decided to use the 16-year-old boy as a labor force. While working on the Judenrampe, a railway platform where trains of the Jews arrived, the guy saw all the horror of the slaughter arranged in Auschwitz. The victims were convinced that they were not in any danger. Sometimes the Nazis played a whole show. They pretended to be worried about the uncomfortable journey that the newly arrived people had to live. On the way to the gas chambers, on the verge of death, people were promised coffee after the so-called disinfection. Walter soon realized that such a caring game was not a cruel joke. It was following clear instructions. People had to go to their deaths voluntarily and in organized rows. The horror of realizing the scale of deception made Walter decide to escape. At a great time, the accomplices hit Walter and his friend in a special hole under a pile of firewood. The guys lay under a pile of firewood for almost three days. The Jewish youths managed to wait for the change of guards and get out of the security perimeter of the camp. Over 11 days, traveling only at night, without a map or compass, Walter Rosenberg and Fred Metzler managed to cross the mountains, rivers and forests of Nazi-occupied Poland and made their way to the homeland of Slovakia. The survivors contacted the remnants of the local Jewish community hid in the basement of a retirement home in the provincial town of Zielina and spent two weeks telling their stories in Auschwitz. These testimonies would become the first truth about the crimes of Nazism and would have a stunning effect for generations to come. The targeted carpet bombing of London began on the 7th of September 1940. From then on, the Luftwaffe, the German Air Force, attacked the airspace of the British capital almost continuously. The Germans were convinced that the bombing of London would break the spirit of its inhabitants and cause such damage to England that the landing of troops on the British Isles would simply not be necessary. The country would capitulate and withdraw from the war. For the first 57 days, the attacks were daily. Here's what local newspapers wrote. Incendiary bombs and fire destroyed the historic Dutch house in London. But readers are still rushing to its library. And despite the subtle British humor inherent in the telling, the consequences of the shelling were terrifying. The destruction was unprecedented, as was the number of victims. Londoners spent weeks sleeping in the subway, putting out fires, losing relatives, watching them die, or miraculously digging their own family members out of the debris. 
Ammunition that did not detonate became a common occurrence in homes and crowded places. On the 17th of October 1940, a German bomb fell on a house in Shoreditch, East London, but did not explode. Private Sailor Bennett Southwell and his commander, Sub-Lieutenant Jack Easton, were called to the rescue. Easton decided to try to defuse the bomb where it was lying. The sappers heard a ticking. A powerful explosion occurred in the house which destroyed almost everything. Easton was buried under the rubble from the explosion, but was eventually found and saved. Southwell was hit by the wave of the blast and died. For their actions, the sappers were awarded the St. George's Cross by King George VI at Buckingham Palace in October 1941. The London Blitz lasted eight months. During this time, more than 40,000 people were killed by the bombardment and about 1.4 million were left homeless. On the 23rd of February 2022, Russia launched a full-scale war of conquest against Ukraine. Hundreds of settlements came under missile and artillery attacks, and the Russian army of thousands sought to capture the capital Kiev in three days. Blitzkrieg style. The Ukrainian army fought for every meter of its land. But Russia didn't give up its intentions. For 68 days, Russian troops shelled Popasna, a city in Luhansk region where a 15-year-old Lisa lived. A girl who was destined to become one of the faces of the Ukrainian resistance. Lisa, an orphan since childhood, lived with her godmother in Popasna. On the 6th of May 2022, the girl noticed a car standing on the road and in it, four wounded, three men and a woman. People tried to evacuate the city on their own, but the car came under fire. People wounded by fragments were bleeding to death, begging for rescue. At that time, the nearest operating hospital was in the city of Bakhmut, 30 kilometers from Popasna. Lisa, didn't have a driver's license, but she knew how to drive a car with a manual transmission. The girl made a decision with lightning speed. The road to the hospital was mined. As Lisa says, she miraculously managed to avoid the mines laid out on the road in a staggered order. However, soon the car was shelled by the Russian military. Bullets pierced not only the car, but also the people in it. The teenager at the wheel was shot in the legs. I got hit in the legs and started to get cold feet. The car stalled, said Lisa about that experience. She made another attempt to start the car. And meanwhile, the shelling did not stop. In a state of shock, the girl stepped on the gas pedal and started moving. I drove as far as I could. It wasn't easy for me, it was very painful, but still, at least somehow, I couldn't have left them under fire, the girl later explained. With her legs pierced, Lisa managed to escape from the shelling. It was painful to squeeze the clutch with my left foot, she recalls later. However, very soon, the car stopped. As it turned out, Russian bullets had damaged the battery then it seemed there was no hope of salvation. However, Lisa and the people she was carrying were lucky. The Ukrainian military came across them. The girl and those whom she saved their lives were taken to the hospital. Everyone survived. The girl managed to save her injured legs. Only her finger was amputated. Although the treatment will be long, the strong-willed girl will walk, doctors say but she will never be young again. This is a photo posted on 8th of April 2018 by the Syrian Civil Defense White Helmets. It shows 
Omran Daknish. The boy miraculously survived the bombing of the city of Aleppo. With Russian support, Bashar al-Assad's forces shelled the city using poison gas ammunition. A child sitting in an ambulance is shocked and disoriented. A creepy photo of a boy rescued from the rubble has spread around the world, becoming another reminder of the victims of the war in Syria. The fact that he managed to escape is pure luck. Fantastically, Omar's family, mom, dad, sister and brother also survived in the destroyed house. During the period of military confrontation in Syria, hundreds of children were affected. Syrian rescuers and medics regularly report numerous victims of the military confrontation in the country. The Syrian government denies the allegations. Twenty-five years ago, during the Bosnian Civil War, the Bosnian Serb army committed genocide against more than 8,000 Bosnian Muslims in Srebrenica. Bosnian Serb forces, under the command of General Ratko Mladic, attacked the eastern enclave in Srebrenica, where about 40,000 Bosnian Muslims took refuge in a safe zone under UN protection. After the capture of the city by the Serbs on the 11th of July 1995, it was possible to agree on the evacuation of women and young children. They were separated from the men and taken to territory controlled by the Bosnian army. Male Muslims, from elders to teenagers, were summarily executed. Some tried to avoid being killed by fleeing through the woods. But the vast majority were caught up, captured and murdered. However, some managed to escape. And among the survivors is Ramzi Nukic. After the Serbs attacked Srebrenica, he sent his family to a camp in the nearby village of Potokari, which was guarded by the UN. And he joined 15,000 people who tried to escape through the forest. From his settlement, Kravitsi, Nukic is the only one who managed to survive and was able to return home. One day in 2002, while sorting through the rubble near his destroyed home, Ramzi came across human remains and personal belongings. Nukic managed to identify them and later another 300 victims of the genocide. It is now believed that in 1995, from 1,000 to 1,500 people were killed in the forest near the place where Nukic lives. This has become a mission, the 59-year-old father of five told Reuters, explaining that he started the search in hopes of finding the remains of his father, uncle and his two brothers who went missing after the massacre. When I find the bone, I know that some mother will get peace, Nukic said. 100 of the remains he found belong to people who were considered missing. Nukic passes on his finds to investigators from the Institute of Missing Persons, who then compare the human remains with DNA samples donated by relatives of the missing persons to identify them. The UN War Crimes Tribunal in The Hague ruled that these killings were genocide and convicted Mladic and his political mentor Radovan Karadzic of committing genocide and other war crimes in Srebrenica to lifelong sentences. This is the power of reason. Always remember that our true power lies in rational thought and a clear mind. When we're threatened with the daily flow of disinformation, and the manipulation of news. So please do the reasonable thing and start following our project right now. <laughs>